I'm guest host, aka Teenage Heartthrob, aka Zion Barber, and this is The Transcript. This week on The Transcript, we talk about the underground hip hop scene in Northampton featuring yours truly. Connor McGlendon interviews Megan McCarthy, captain of the girls' field hockey team for Hamped Up. Nell Sanders tells it like it is about Syrian refugees relocating to Northampton. And Meredith Pavlovich talks about girls' crocs on the soccer team. Afro Panther, and I'm 21. I'm Zod. I'm 17. And I got into making music because I had this group back when I was in my old school in Pittsburgh. I had this group. We were called Rat Gang. We just had fun. We were like an all future copycat group. And I really just enjoyed that. And all of my friends are like real rappers, like Mojo and Bocce. They're all rappers already. So I was like, I have to hop on this. Um, I've always been into music. I started playing violin when I was five, so I've always been like musical. I worked my way up to playing all these different instruments, started DJing a little bit, started taking my DJing seriously. When I changed my name to like Afro Panther, um, that's when I started rapping and taking my rapping seriously too. That's when uh, Mike Brown got shot. And so that was like when I was like, I think 18. I think I started rapping when I was like really young because I came from like a family of rappers. They really kind of inspired me to really like put my emotional uh, side on the paper. Recently we've been doing more like turn up stuff and stuff that you just listen to and like vibe to. I definitely want to like, obviously I want that rich and famous lifestyle, but also I want to take all this money and redistribute it in whatever way I can give back to the community that has brought me up. There's a lot of like work that can be done and like activist work once you like get to that. I want to get to an influential level and really make a difference in this community. I don't know, I like to make party songs because that's what people like to hear. And people always want to forget about the bad times and whatnot, but like let's do something about those bad times. Audience that will listen to what you have to say. Tyler's Creator started a whole movement amongst teenagers and now everybody dresses like our future now. It's because Tyler Creator managed to hit this demographic in which people would listen to what he has to say and people would accept being themselves. I feel like trap music is looked at as silly and like dumb. The trap is what's happening in black communities today. So like how is something that's relevant dumb? Rap is rhythm and poetry, you know? And we want to bring the rhythm and poetry back into rap music. I got now it's prime time in my movie Telling everybody I'm the coolest like a smoothie Everybody out here, I just like moving Like my movements and these niggas foolish I think really stupid, I can't believe they do this I can't believe I ruined this shit With my music moved up to Massachusetts And everybody now from Pittsburgh Rep the city, it is so pretty Yo, them lights are so pretty, yo, what? Well, you gotta really get with me when I'm hitting And I'm boxing my fitting I said, oh my God, I'm so biting I don't even care, I strike like lightning Man, I'm saying why y'all praying, preaching like I'm teaching these freaking kids. You know that I might have to spit a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Bring it back, cause I'm from 88's rap. Man, shy guy, so fucking crap. Hey, so caught it and I'm stunning. I know that I'm not fronting, but I know that I'm going in. And I know that I'm flowing with all my lyrics. Say it one time. I met one time, but that's okay. Had a little spice <laughs> like OJ. <laughs> I'm like, put the ginger in it. Yeah, shy guy, now get out my face. You ain't in my lane. Broke out my chain. Had to change the n from the slave name. I said, everybody, this needs a change. We all need to change. Need to change. Everybody like me. Y'all ready for this? Hello and welcome to week three of Hamped Up. I'm your host, Connor McClendon, and this week I talked to Megan McCarthy about the field hockey team, who faces a tough challenge in Frontier this Friday. I'm here with Megan McCarthy, and we are here to talk about the field hockey team. So the field hockey program at Northampton, you guys are off to a fast start this year, and this is mm -hmm. a program that's been good for a really long time. So what do you think it is about the program here, about the Northampton, that keeps it successful year after year? I think we have a really great group of girls who are wicked athletic and are willing to put in a lot of hard work and are willing to take the time to really focus on like what skills they need to do to like improve themselves but also like improve us as a team. I think that's something that um, our coach has been like really 
adamant about and I think that's really like helped us become the team that we've we are today. So where does this team hope to finish by the end of the season? Obviously I'm assuming you have Western high Mass. Aspects. <laughs> Western Mass. Um, we've been finalists the last two years and we haven't come home with a win, but we've made it pretty far the last few years and that's that's the goal this year. <laughs> And so you're a three-sport athlete. I'm sure we'll have you back here for basketball <laughs> and for lacrosse. So do you like that? Do you like playing year-round? I love sport? playing year-round. I don't know what I would do if I didn't play a sport. I think it really helps um, not only with just staying in shape, but also like making connections with people. Well, thank you so much for being here this week, and thank good luck you. this season. Thank you. In other sports news, both the boys' and girls' cross-country teams won on senior night against Minichog. The girls' soccer team faced a couple of setbacks and fell to third place in their league. The boys' soccer team is also third in their league, and they will take on last place Chicopee Comp this Friday. Finally, the golf team sits in last place, and the football team picked up a big 12-7 victory over South Hadley on the road last week, but lost a couple of key players as both running back Nick Smith and wide receiver Andy Gregor Sevich went down with injuries. Both players need surgery and could potentially miss the rest of the season. I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. Since December 2015, the Northampton City Council has been meeting to discuss the 51 refugees that are relocating to our community within the year. Now, this all came about because the City Council decided on a refugee resolution that declared Northampton a sanctuary for all refugees fleeing the Syrian crisis. Refugees will be resettled by January 2017 and are relocating from places like Syria, Burundi, and the Congo. Meetings took place last week on Mondays and Thursdays. Now, the topic of refugees is pretty touchy and raises the question of safety and morality. So I decided to interview NHS students on their opinions on the 51 refugees and the Syrian case as a whole. Can you state your name and grade? I'm Alex Cotter. I'm in 12th grade. Jesse Zeldes. I'm a junior. I'm Isaac Bond. I'm a sophomore. I'm Gabe Broder. I'm also a sophomore. Uh, Willow Zadwarney. I'm a junior. Uh, Lily. I'm a junior. So we are accepting 51 refugees into our town over the next year. Do you think that number is too big or too small? I mean, my first instinct is to say that number is too small because I think the U.S. should be doing a lot more to accept refugees. Uh, the EU has been accepting tons of refugees for a long time, and I think it's important that we sort of play our part, especially with all the military action the U.S. is taking in the Middle East. I think we could always accept more, but it also depends on what resources we have. I don't think that there can be a number that's too big because we need to help these people, we need to bring them in. Do you think the U.S. has a moral obligation to accept refugees or is that an unsafe measure? Yeah, no, I think it's a moral obligation. Like, uh, perhaps not specifically in Syria, but a lot of conflict in the Middle East has been caused, and even the conflict in Syria arguably has been caused by U.S. intervention in the area. I think America should be a place where people should feel safe to come to. They seem pretty chill. Doesn't seem like a lot of harm could happen, so what's, what's the harm? I do not think we are morally obligated to take in refugees because it's not a direct it's not a direct concern of us. It's like in Europe, they are literally bordering like Turkey and all those areas, so they go right into the country, whereas we we have a process, and I don't really believe that we need to get ourselves involved in other people's business. So what do you think about the 51 refugees? Let me know. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Okay, so I was sitting in physics class when Crocs DM'd me, and they said, congratulations, you are a potential winner in the Crocs contest. We saw like the post on Instagram that said like it'll provide team crocs for like your entire team and like all 20 people. We we're like, oh wow, like we should just like try it, even though we probably won't win. Everyone like yeah. commented pretty like diligently for the first few days, and then after that it kind of slid off. So we were really into it at first, and we we're like, oh, we probably won't win anyway. So then we stopped. Um, so our team was thinking about using the two thousand dollars to either um, get something for like our entire program so that JV and varsity could also get something. And right now we're thinking about like practice shirts or like warm-ups or something. 
And if you ever at home and you get bored, check out NHSTechnology.org.